left. It is Tuesday, the 27th of December. Yeah, no, sorry, it's the 20th. Yeah, it's the 27th of December, isn't it? And it's the third day of um, Tevis. And we're learning the very end of Hanukkah that we didn't finish yesterday. We have to finish it quickly. We said there are three levels of performance of mitzvot. We said the ground level, the basic level, when you perform everything that you're obligated to. Then there's the beautification of the mitzvah, hidur mitzvah. And then we said there's mehadrin min mehadrin, which is only in Hanukkah, which is the beautification of the beautification, it's a higher level that doesn't exist in any other mitzvah. And the Rebbe said, not only is it that it's only in Chanukah, but we see that everybody performs this highest level, which is to increase by one candle every day. We're on page 81. Right? Okay. And then he said that the way to understand this is that there are three levels of how God conducts the world, how we how providence works. And the three levels, he said, were the natural type of providence, meaning you get, what you get out is what you put in. What you did what you were obligated, you get out the, the reward. Then there is what we call the supernatural or miraculous uh, conduct. And it's when you put in a certain amount, but you get back a lot more. And then there's the super miraculous meaning not supernatural, not just miraculous, but super miraculous. It's above that. And there, there's almost no measure to what you get back compared to what you put in. So the Rebbe here is, is sort of putting it like as, 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 as a cause and effect. Depending on how much you put into the act that you're doing, or the, not just how much you put in, but the quality of what you're doing, that changes what comes out. So he says that the way these work are, Yudzayin, because we know that all the conduct above, this is a, a very important staple in the Zohar, and in all the <coughs> mystical literature, is that as above, so below, or below, as above. In any case, there's a connection between... Each one is a mere image of the other. Right. But here we're saying not just a mirror image, but one causes the other. So w- usually we would say that the, uh, what's above causes below. That's the usual way that th- people think. But the Torah changes that equation. And instead of only God causing what happens here below, it gives us the power to actually change what happens above. And now everything that's above becomes dependent on man's conduct. So there are three qualities of work, three ways in which we work that bring about these three types of conduct. The natural conduct. When you perform the obligations of the Torah, per their letter, then the world conducts itself according to nature. God ensures that nature subsists. The miraculous type of conduct, or let's call it retribution, or the result, can only come through meticulousness or beautification of the mitzvos, the commandments that you perform. What does this mean? Because you went above and beyond, so God also gives more than what He needed to based on nature. That's called a miraculous conduct. But the third type, super miraculous, can come only through self-sacrifice. And self-sacrifice, he says, this is the basis of what we call the hitter of the hitter. How is that? So it's interesting. I don't think that he says this. I don't remember exactly what he says. We'll see it in a moment, but I don't remember that he says it. Mehadrin, we said yesterday, when it comes to Hanukkah candles, means adding another candle every evening. So self-sacrifice... By the Rebbe, this is like a definition. Self-sacrifice means that you're always adding something more. 
you always have to add something more. If you're only repeating what you did yesterday, that's very nice. But that would be like Hanagata Teva. Like na- nature. Nature repeats itself. So you repeat yourself also. We talked about this some, some times that when we, when we look at the natural world, it seems to uh, 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 keep itself alive. It sustains itself. And that's what we call that the Malach strikes it. That there's an angel that strikes every leaf of grass that grows. What does that mean? That you don't need to do anything to cause nature to sustain itself. It sustains itself by itself because it's consistent. Those are angels. Angels keep doing the same thing over and over again. There are people who are like angels. They have the same routine every single day. They won't change it by a millimeter. Good, yeah, uh, they have a, 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 what do we call it? Shem Chiba. How do you say it? Shem Chiba. They have a, an affectionate uh, you know, we, have, we have an affection. We affectionately call them Yekas. Right? They come from Germany. Because that's the type of thing. It's, all, it's like a machine. It's like an angel, really. But when a person adds quality to what they do every day, so that's already hither. That's already beautifying his conduct. But to be in a state of self-sacrifice means that every day he adds something more. And I mentioned this many times that the Rebbe once said, I, why, people ask me, why is it that every time I farbreng, every time I speak in public, I ask people to add something more to their daily conduct. Where do I get this from? And he said, from the day I've been conscious of myself, he was 70 or 80 when he said this, so for, since the day I was conscious of myself, three, four years old, there hasn't been a day that's gone by when I haven't added something to my conduct. Something. So I allow myself from time to time when I see other people to encourage them to do the same. And that's what it means to live in self-sacrifice, to add all the time. And that causes God to act super miraculously with a person. Meaning he's not just, re- not just sustaining, giving what already, uh, like nature, what is already built into the system. He's not just giving more miraculously. He's doing super miraculous retribution. He's giving him much, much more than what he put into it because he's sacrificing himself. He's changing himself Every single day. Sikum advarim. We're going to the Gemara. Next page. B'sha'asha choshech gadol en litrash. I sorry, sorry. I went backwards. Eighteen. Yitzrona shem misrut nefesh alidur mitzvah. Why is self-sacrifice greater than beautifying the mitzvah? So now he, he takes us in another direction. He says, really, we can understand this based on the three levels of the crown. The three levels of the crown are, are will, pleasure, and faith. Okay, those are the three levels inside the crown, the highest part of the soul. When a person has the sense of beautifying, of making something more than what it is, so he's not just performing it because he has to, he has some life in it. He, has, he, he, he feels the life in it. And he has cheshek. He has, how would you say cheshek? Desire. Desire. He has an in, intense inner desire to do this. He, he gets what we, what we explain as pleasure. Pleasure, doesn't people think about pleasure as what do I get out of, out of what I do? But pleasure is actually a motivating force. A person knows where he feels good. And so in these places where he feels good, he will invest himself at a, a completely different level. That's what we call, when we, that's what we usually mean when we say the person's in his zone, he's in his medium. And that's what's called a chush, a sense in Hasidus. Rav Zalman Zezmer said that this is a chush. A chush means a sense is when you have the pleasure instilled, imbued in your willpower. He was the greatest chassid of the Alter Rebbe, the biggest maskil, the biggest uh, intellectual. And he was the one who was Makar of Reb Hillel and Reb Isaac, two chassidists. We have very little from him, but Reb Hillel mentioned some of his teachings uh, in, in his commentaries, especially on Shari Yechud, from the Mittler Rebbe. So the, 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 this quickly that 
the parable for this is a servant who does what his king tells him. So the servant does things because he has to. Right? He doesn't have a choice. But what if he doesn't do it just because he has to, but also because he feels the pleasure from doing it, of fulfilling, of getting the opportunity to do. He, he, he loves his king, he loves his master. He says, I, I love, I cherish the opportunity to do this. And so it, it adds something completely different into it. Again, if people do Torah and mitzvot, they perform mitzvot, commandments, just because they have to, because the Torah said so. No, said it. they did it. They're worthy of a reward. But that's, that doesn't mean there's a good relationship. The good relationship means that I care what Hashem said, I care what God said, because I care about His world. That's the difference between the natural love in the soul for God and the type of love that comes from contemplation. That I understand that Hashem is my chayus, He is my life force. It's not Him and me. Uh, we have to strike some kind of deal and not get on each other's nerves. And, but when you, but it's, it's, it's all here. I, I am in the same program. I'm not someone who was taken off the street and just forced to do these things. I buy into it. I understand it. Of course, that means you have to understand why, why, this is, why the Torah is the way it is. But even if you don't understand, you understand at least that the fact that I identify with God, it makes me want to do the mitzvot at a completely different level. It makes me want to follow His laws at a completely different level because it's not just that I have to. Not just obligated. I, that's what it means to beautify something. To beautify is to see the, the beauty in it, to see the, to get pleasure from it. But there's still a problem because he sees himself as something separate. Right? Next paragraph. There is the pleasure that he uh, the, the, the one the desire that he gets to. Uh, from his understanding of the king that he wants to perform his commandments, but he's still someone else. He's separate. He's a separate being from him. He just identifies with him. He understands him. But self-sacrifice means that I don't identify with myself at all. I only identify with God. I only identify with the will that he wants me to perform something. And, and that's very interesting because it's saying that if you want to advance, if you want to improve your conduct from day to day, to add new things, you have to stop identifying with yourself. And we say this a lot of times, that people live backwards. Instead of going into the future, they're going into the past. They're, they're facing the past instead of facing the future. What does that mean? One of the meanings of that is that they're constantly upkeeping making sure that they don't lose what they had in the past. But and that the means... Is also facing the past. No, that's something else. I'm, not, I'm changing the past. I'm not facing the past. I'm not facing the past in order to sustain it, to ensure that it doesn't change. On the contrary, I want to change it. That's something else. But, but most, maybe that's why people started facing the, 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 the backwards in the first place, because they wanted to do chuba, but they forgot why they came there. When you face life the right way, you're facing forward and you're saying, the best person that I can be is still ahead of me. It has nothing to do with what I was in the past. So if in the past people said, oh, he's a big Talmud Chacham. I used to be a big Talmud Chacham a long time ago. I was about to become a really big Talmud Chacham. But then I stopped. <laughs> Hashem got me to stop. He, he has his ways. Yeah, he made me forget everything. How do, you, how do you do it? He has his ways. Anyway, I was... But then, if I live the rest of my life trying to recover what I had in the past, I'm missing all the great things that I can become in the future. A person has to be willing to add things by saying, I can be much more than what I am now. In the end, you'll also have what you had in the past. Uh, uh, you'll also have what you had in the past. It'll, it'll, it'll also come with you. But it might not be as conscious as you want it to be. But you have to be forward-looking all the time. You have to be saying, what can I become? And the best that I can become is still ahead of me. 
that has to be the thinking. And a person who thinks that way is in a state of self-sacrifice because he doesn't care about the self he was yesterday. He's not saying, I, I don't want it. He's saying, of course, I'd love to have it with me. But th- I'm not going to waste my time trying to ensure that that's how everyone sees me, the way I was in the past. I want, I want to be something more today. And that's what it means to add. So that's called mehadrin min manhadrin. That takes away from your self-involvement. Because all self-involvement is trying to upkeep an image of myself that I have from my past. And the moment that I'm opening myself up to being something new, then I'm really connecting to godliness. Hashem, as, as, in a certain sense, is always forward-facing. Okay? In a certain sense. He's also everywhere, but... But in, in terms of when you think about uh, the godliness that changes, that brings life into the world, so that is the godliness that's always looking at the future and saying the future can be better. And, 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 and you really see that about people. You, you see, like, what do people think about the future? What's the future going to be like? So you see all these people, like, supposedly very spiritual people. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be a war. There's going to be this, that. They've got all this pessimism. They're reliving the past. They, they, don't, they haven't yet turned to face godliness truly. Because when you turn to face the future, then you see everything optimistically. Because everything can be better. It's not going to be worse. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's his explanation of Mesir Nefesh, of self-sacrifice, and why it has to do with super miraculous uh, retribution for what one does. Mordechai finds me with a normal explanation of what's going on.